Have you ever looked through one of those coffee table books of scenic areas across the nation or the calendars that have all the mountain scenes of the lakes, the rivers, tour guide books, or the photos in offices of mountain lakes in remote areas and thought, wow, that is so beautiful and relaxing. Most likely you were looking at a photo that had been taken by John Fielder, an American landscape photographer who is a self-taught photographer and has been taking these photos for almost half a century. In addition to photography, he is also a nature writer, publisher, teacher, and conservationist. I myself enjoy taking photos of Mother Nature, the beauty in the mountains, and I find John Fielder an inspiration not only for myself, but for landscape photographers. I'm Mary Seaman, and come along with me as I tell you a little bit about John Fielder. Born in 1950 in Washington, D.C., it wasn't until John turned 14 that he got to see Colorado for the first time, and that was thanks to Mrs. Hickman, his junior high science teacher. She used to take her students on field trips to see the areas they were studying in class. In high school, it was thanks to Mr. Birch that John had the encouragement to be true to his own creative self. Summer breaks he got to spend in Colorado as a Colorado ranch hand, as well as panning for gold and silver. He, after high school, he went on to Duke University where he studied accounting. After graduation, he came back to Denver, Colorado, where he was a department store executive for the next eight years. During this time, he would spend his weekends and other free time hiking the mountains, taking in the sights, seeing the different natural areas that we have here in Colorado. He eventually decided to try his hand at photography. After taking some inspiration from the works of Ansel Adams and Elliot Porter, he tried to mimic their style of photography. As any great artist knows, you need to be true to your own style. And in this case, it wasn't until John was true to his self that he became successful. He's a self-taught photographer. Uh, it was through trial and error and continued photography that he's developed the talent he has today. And today, he still resides in Colorado in Summit County by Potomac Peak Wilderness in an eco-friendly home that he actually designed. John's photography career has earned him several accolades, and this is just a partial listing. Some he's most proud about is the Aldo Leopold Foundation's Achievement Award he received in 2011. This is the first time an individual has ever been given this award. He is also proud of the fact that his photos have been used in several Colorado legislation measures to preserve the wilderness areas. He's helped pass several initiatives. Some of the works he's most famous for is the Colorado 1870 to 2000 series. This is where he has taken photos in the exact same spot at the same angle as the 19th century photographer William Henry Jackson, a pioneer photographer. Readers can see the exact same scene a hundred years ago and compare it with today. They sound really fascinating and I'm actually thinking of checking them out from the library. Why landscape photography? John says he enjoys being in nature where he can take in the beautiful landscapes, the sights, the sounds, the smells. He also enjoys taking the photos so that others can see this beauty. He, he hopes that people will be inspired when they see his photos to visit nature and appreciate the fragility of the landscape. I like the, his little quote where he says, it pleases him to compose nature with a camera, isolating the order out of the chaos. John Fielder used to primarily use a large format 4x5 film view camera for all his photography. Only thing is, it's a little bit heavy and cumbersome when he was going on week-long photo shoots. The equipment alone would weigh almost 65 pounds. This included the camera, the tripod, seven camera lenses, about 400 sheets of color film, and 300 sheet film holders. This does not include the other essential equipment for staying out in the rugged terrain of the wilderness for a week at a time. Today, about 80% of his photos are taken with a digital Canon camera, both in SLR and point-and-shoot styles. The 4x5 camera is still used to take his large prints that he sells in his galleries. During the winter, he goes ski, uh, skiing and snowshoeing to take, capture his photos. In the spring, he often shoots while rafting down the rivers. 
In the summer, he'll use his llamas and a Sherpa to travel into the rugged areas of Colorado wilderness. He takes photos in full color in black and white, and the quality level of the photos allows for no size limitations, including archival wallpaper. This is an example of John Filder's photography that I really enjoyed. It's called Indian Peaks Wilderness near Boulder, Colorado. The clearness, the sharpness of the water surface like a sheet of mere glass, the way the mountains, the trees, everything is reflected. The colors, those giant stone formations in the middle of the water, not even a ripple on the water surface. I could just sit here for hours taking in the light and the sights of the last few hours of the day. The Holy Cross Wilderness near Vail, Colorado photo was one I really enjoyed. The colors, those blues, the purples of the mountains in the back speaking to majestic Rocky Mountains, the way those pine trees to stand tall and lean against all the blue and they reflected so beautifully on that water surface. How he captures the water when it's so calm and peaceful, not a ripple on the surface, and just like mirroring everything that's in the sights in the sky. It's just so amazing to me. Um, I just love the coloring in this photo. And then you have that real vibrant green in the front to balance out the blue just breathtaking for me. The colors in his raw wilderness near Walden were just so amazing in this photo. The pinks, the oranges, the purples, colorings in the mountains, what, looking at the way the trees break up the line between the mountain tops and the water line. I, I just love seeing that reflective nature on that water surface. The little green spot of meadow at the base of the forest, my eye keeps looking over there saying, is there going to be an elk, a moose, a deer coming through there? What animal is going to come down for a drink of water? I live not too far from Walden and have been through this area. And that whole region is very pretty with the mountains and the trees. I just really enjoyed this photo as well. Like John Fielder, I also like taking pictures of scenery and landscape, especially in here in the United States. This photo here is an example from Alamo Mission Park in San Antonio, Texas, that I took this summer while I was visiting. I really enjoy the way the greens are so vibrant in this photo. You have the actual mission building in the background, seeing the historic architecture, styling, um, and this is the Mission Concepcion that is in one of the missions in the park. I also enjoy taking photos of water. This is an example in Riverwalk, San Antonio, Texas. Hearing the sounds of the water trickling over the walkway, um, the cool feeling, the calmness, the serenity feel that one felt when they were near this water's edge, I really enjoyed. The, that is actually a waterway that has boats that will go through there. I, I would love to spend more time taking some photos. Uh, the family I was with, we were looking for a place to have dinner and so didn't get to spend a whole lot of time here, but I enjoyed the moment I got to stop and capture this shot. This final photo of Granby, Colorado is a good representation of many of the photos I do take. I enjoy the mountains and the water, which are both present here, the different colorings in the greenery. This photo speaks to me as a nice, calm, peaceful country feel. Um, in Off to the right, it's not captured in the photo, there were wagons and an old tractor. I just really enjoy this type of photography. When I look through my collection of photos, though, I may be great at taking memorable photos of the scenes. I just forget the family and friends, which I really need to incorporate more. Hopefully, thanks to my grandson, I will start doing that more. John Fielder had some advice for aspiring photographers that I thought would be nice to share. 
he says great photography doesn't come from cameras it comes from appreciating your subject matter whether it's people or nature if you're in love with your subject matter you'll make better photos to be a good wildlife photographer one needs patience and a great knowledge about animals landscape photography is more spontaneous and finally my advice to photography students is to be perceptive always keep an eye open for new shapes new colors different kinds of light and how light affects the way we see the landscape never forget that one cannot take a good picture unless one sees the picture first the quality of one's camera is not as important as the way one sees nature the best photographers I know be they portrait photojournalists or nature photographers have a genuine love for their subject matter their photographs have a quality unique to those people only in love with the camera and here finally is my bibliography if you'd like to see more photos by John Filder you can visit his online gallery at John Filder's Colorado with the URL listed here thank you very much and I hope you've enjoyed hearing about John Filder